which operate in discrete time space and discrete state space. Whereas when we talk about uh, the Markov jump process, they operate in discrete state space but continuous time. So we don't uh, calculate uh, the values of the variables say let's say at the end of the year or uh, uh, at, the, at the end of any specific time period but on a continuous basis. But of course the number of states into which the number of uh, states into which uh, the, the values of the process can be going into they are discrete in nature. So either they may be uh, integers the states could be integers the states could be a, a, a finite uh, number of uh, finite number of uh, categories or it may even be infinite number but it is a discrete set of state spaces so whenever we are uh, talking about uh, <coughs> any process which follows a discrete state space as well as a continuous uh, continuous time space and of course it should follow markovian properties what is that markovian property the values of the current period uh, t whatever the values of uh, the current period t are dependent only on the previous uh, period value t minus 1 and no other uh, value before that so, uh, any, any value which we are uh, looking at the dependency is just with the previous uh, value and not any other uh, values uh, uh, before that is what uh, will be satisfying the Markovian property. So, any, uh, any uh, process which follows a Markovian property in the discrete state space as well as the continuous time space is what we call as the Markov jump process. So, a very special example with respect to a Markov jump process is a Poisson process. See, whenever we talk about a Poisson process, we talk about uh, uh, in a particular period of time, right, some, uh, some particular uh, uh, variables arriving in a particular period of time. Let's say the number of customers number of customers uh, arriving in a day it may follow a Poisson process. Now what could be the state space when I am looking at number of customers initially it may be zero but after that it may go to 1, it may go to 2, it may go to 3, so on, it may go to 100, let's say. So these are the various state spaces that are coming up. And they are expected to follow, they are expected to follow a Poisson distribution. For example, whatever, uh, if I am taking uh, generally denoted by NT, at any point in time uh, t, I am looking at uh, the numbers. This is following a Poisson distribution. If I say with rate lambda, if I am saying that this is following, if the number of arrival of the number of customers is following a Poisson uh, process with the rate lambda, then it means when I am typically uh, looking at, at a particular, uh, see lambda could be per hour or something and t could be in number of hours right probably if I say lambda per hour and uh, this t is t hours then what we are saying is if nt will follow a Poisson distribution with lambda t as the parameter so what does that mean the probability for anything will become probability of x equal to x for this kind of lambda t will become e power minus lambda t into lambda t power whatever x divided by x factorial. The probability of some x equal to x 
will be, become this because now the NT is expected to follow a Poisson distribution. So probably in the same example, if the question is like, okay, the customers arrive at the rate of 3 per hour. And we are talking about uh, a Poisson uh, process. So within, uh, uh, let's say within 6 hours, right, if I am saying uh, the lambda is uh, 3 per hour, and I am saying NT is like within 6 hours, what uh, could be the uh, uh, what could be the probability that uh, I get more than 20 customers? Something something of that sort. So when I am taking N6 directly, I can start working out as a Poisson distribution with uh, 18 as uh, the parameter here, lambda. And from there I can use, okay, uh, probability of X greater than 20. So it should be 21, 22, 23, so on. So or I could, I should uh, find out what is the probability of x less than or equal to 20, and then uh, subtract uh, all that summation from one. So here, what we are talking of is the increment. Now, n6 is the number of customers that are arriving at uh, time six. But when I am uh, looking at uh, a slight, okay, n t plus h. So, the time that, uh, uh, the, uh, a little bit of additional time, the, the, this time difference, if I am talking about, uh, which is nothing but the increment, the increment, okay, the number of customers arriving at uh, time n t, and this n t plus h is number of customers arriving at time t plus h. The probability of this is equal to 1. So, uh, see, what, uh, this given whatever is the filtration at uh, time t, this is lambda h. What does that mean? See, the, the, it is like uh, the number of customers are arriving at the rate of lambda let's say per period lambda per period if i am talking about h periods it's like h lambda per period right or h lambda is the probability of arriving during this h period so that is where we are saying the probability of nt plus h minus nt is equal to 1 given whatever is the information up to the time period t, this is equal to lambda h and uh, the probability that the same is uh, equal to 0, right, uh, the pro the, uh, like uh, there is no increment during this uh, h time period, we are directly uh, taking it as 1 minus uh, lambda h. But of course, uh, we are giving some small order of uh, h for all these things. And finally, when we are saying nt plus h minus nt equal greater than or equal to 2, that is very minimal 0 or probably a small order of uh, h kind of stuff. Which means this kind of a process, this kind of a process we associate directly to a Poisson process. One, it has independent increments. The increments are completely independent. Uh, they are only dependent uh, on, okay, uh, if there are three customers now, the next uh, increment is like it will go to four customers. But uh, the time that it takes, it follows a Poisson process, but it is an independent increment and it is a stationary also. So, which means it is